I know where there's some, right here in the hall clerk. No, no, my God. Right, let's check in on the uh, recapping progress on the chassis. Um, it's come along pretty good. I've got most of the uh, waxy paper caps out. Uh, this is a notable exception because this needs to be a 1600 volt uh, cap and I didn't have any on hand so I had to order some. Um, but otherwise all the rest of them are done. What I am finding is that these, these more modern, if you'll pardon the expression, uh, black caps like this guy um, are pretty bad too. They're all, this one is kind of leaky, it's all get out. Um, so even though they're wrapped in what looks like nice plastic, doesn't mean they're not bad either. So this one and several others I imagine will have to be pulled out. Uh, what else is going on with this? The audio transformer replacement arrived today, so I'll be working on that in the next few days. Um, but the project today is the the uh, volume on-off switch. Um, the switch part doesn't work uh, when I measured across the um, potentiometer. Uh, it works, but you know it's umpty ump zillion years old. So I'll have to take it apart. So I thought I'd show you that process. Not that you haven't seen it before, but I'll show it to you again. Come in, focus, come in, focus. All right, according to the schematic, this is a one meg ohm uh, variable with an, um, obviously an on-off switch attached to the back. The switch doesn't come, come apart separately from the back. So we'll have to get at it by taking um, this part off the uh, potentiometer. So we set that aside. And if you've never done this before, it's really pretty straightforward but with risks. What you do is there are these tabs around here. You bend those tabs back, but you don't break them off. <laughs> That's the trick. Um, and they can stand about, I've, in my experience, I've, I've taken them apart, cleaned them, put them back together incorrectly, had to take it apart again, put it back together correctly. Uh, these tabs will take, a, take this process about twice before they uh, fatigue and yield and give up the ghost. So I'll just pry them back a ways with my little nippers. of the way. And at this point you have to kind of start holding this together uh, otherwise it'll all just fall on your bench. You'll have to figure out how it, how it went after the fact. the uh, switch part we have to deal with and well, I'm sh I don't I doubt you can see it maybe you can but inside here are scratch marks on these tabs these three tabs are the ones that hold this to the switch this adapter to the switch which means somebody's been in here before for some reason um, well, reason being it probably didn't work. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll take a look at that in a minute. Here's the, um, yeah, the potentiometer itself. There's a, there's a wiper 
right here. Little brass wiper. It's sprung, and that's what wipes on this. This I believe it's a piece of phenolic with um, with graphite on it. But from one end to the other, and and the wiper itself. Let me back up again. This end and this end, this pin and this pin give maximum resistance. The wiper is attached to the center pin, or rather the center pin is attached to the wiper. So it picks up a variable resistance. Uh, the resistance from the wiper to this end at this point is almost zero or zero. And it's at its maximum between this one and this, this pin. And then the reverse is true on the opposite side. So I'll get some uh, contact cleaner and we'll clean this up and see how it behaves. We can test that the way it is right here. The switch is a little more problematic. Let's see if I can trigger it here by, uh, by hand. Yeah, you can hear it click. But that doesn't mean it's making contact inside. What I might try to do is spray some deoxid or something in there without taking it the rest of the way apart and see if I can get that switch to start activating. I'll do that, otherwise we'll have to take this part too. Okay, I shot a brief blast of deoxid in there and it seems to have cleaned up the, the uh, on off switch. So we'll try it here in the analog meter because I want to use that to test the uh, potentiometer anyway, the volume control. So that looks like it did the trick just to shut a deoxid inside the inside the uh, switching mechanism itself. Now let's do the same thing to the um, potentiometer. Sweep that around and around a few times. And it's on 100k scale, so that should be fine. All right, let's see what this does now. So end to end on this is not a MIG, um, we're on the ohm scale here, oh, sorry it is, 10 times 100,000 is a mega ohm. So slightly over a mega ohm, top scale, slightly over 10. We'll go to the middle wiper pin and from the wiper pin to this side. Oh, that's not bad. Pretty smooth now. Yeah, very nice. We'll check it the other way. I can figure out how to hold it. Oop. 
Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. Well, that was an easy one. I'm thankful for easy ones. <laughs> so I'll put this back together and remount it in the uh, chassis. And that will, will be done with that bit. Um, at this point, the only, <laughs> about the only original components left in here are the uh, ceramic caps, uh, this resistor, which is just about the only one of all the carbon composites that tested good. Um, otherwise, I've replaced a lot of components. Just a ton. I have never seen so many bad carbon comps in my life. Um, when the radio blew up and it got repaired the last time, a bunch of um, semi-inappropriate resistors were put in. But, you know, it probably, it probably worked. I found one that was completely open up in the uh, RF section. Anyway, <clears throat> it's a lot of parts. Every one of those, every one of those um, waxy paper caps are leaky. They're all out of tolerance, every one. This one is oozing out of itself, as you can see. Um, so it was past time to, to do that. Um, <clears throat> this is the tally for replaced parts, tested and replaced parts. All the green marks are uh, things that, oops, all the green marks are things that um, tested good. And then on this sheet, which is virtually the same, this is, whoop, yeah, these two make up the whole thing. And um, every place where you see a bit of a pink line and a green line, those were all replaced. So. Just throughout the radio, um, things were replaced, uh, including down here. I haven't got these marked on this copy. They're marked on this copy. And why I had two different copies, I don't know. But that's how you progress. So I've done all I can do right now. I'm still waiting. This one, this one maxi cap right here is this high voltage cap that I don't have on hand. It, it's ordered and it's coming. These uh, two uh, wire wounds uh, that replace the can dome will stay in. They're both they're both uh, the right wattage and they both test well. Um, this guy down here is that odd sandy. Um, sandy resistor. It's called a Zipohm. Z-I-P-O-H-M. And I think it's it's a wire wound with some kind of sand epoxy um, coating for some reason. Um, but it uh, it's it's the one that where can I, can I show that to you? Nope, I can't. Well, I can. It's right here. It's right here. It, it's actually within tolerance. Um, but it's the one that I may... Uh, since this radio was built in 1951, it was designed for 115 volts, 110, actually, AC. And now that we're getting 125 to 130, that may be one of the resistors I change out to drop the overall voltage in this uh, this power end back down to where it should be. Um, yeah, I'll decide that once I get it fired up and start to look at voltages, but that's my expectation is that it was designed for 110, it's getting 125, 124 now. Uh, that resistor will have something to do with dropping the power 
Um, the other thing I want to look at too is this guy right here, since these are cathode biased um, dual ended output tubes, these 6v6s are running that way. Um, that bias resistor will have to be checked pretty closely and adjusted to to not drive these tubes so hard they melt. Um, so that's something else that will have to be adjusted later. Next, however, my very next task, and probably the very next video, is you'll recall this discriminator transformer right here uh, measures open across the uh, primary and my very next task is to pull that out and uh, take a look at it and when I do I will show you what's in there. And finally I don't recall if I mentioned that I had found a donor chassis. A, uh, a uh, 10H20Z uh, with um, <clears throat> for not much money. Well, as as has turned out twice for me, the one that I was going to use as a donor chassis is in better shape than the original one. Uh, this one is really nice. Um, has its original power transformer. Looks like everything in here is is pristine and un undamaged. Um, the underside looks equally nice. All original components. The only thing that's not original is this output transformer. I'm sure that's a replacement, but um, everything else is, is uh, pretty much the way it came off the uh, shelf. It doesn't, doesn't, hasn't had much work done at all. Um, so, and uh, it has an intact can dome that was that was still in service. <clears throat> so now what to do? I don't want to. This chassis is in too nice a shape to cannibalize. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll keep going with the one I'm working on, and uh, when I'm done with that, I'll uh, zip through this one as well. Because um, I already know now I'll have to replace all the capacitors and all the resistors, it looks like. But in any case, um, got another chassis and, and uh, then we'll, uh, we'll uh, this will give me an opportunity to look at uh, how hot I can measure the temperature of this output transformer when it's rebuilt and get an idea of how hot it runs versus the uh, transformer that was replaced in the in the uh, the one that came with the cabinet. Um, so, surprise! Tubes are all here. Uh, it's exactly the same chassis model. It's in better shape than the one that came with the radio. Um, the only problem with this one really is right here, someone put these monstrous screws <laughs> in to hold the front panel on and they've cracked on both sides they've cracked the, the plastic. Plastic might polish up okay but that's going to be some work. Um, the uh, tone stuff is all here so it's it was a nice find um, and it's still a nice find. It'll be a nice chassis uh, when it's all rebuilt. So there is that. I think that's all for this one, just an update. Um, as I said, next I'll work on the, uh, the uh, discriminator transformer, which is back in here. Oh yeah, I forgot, I've got to on the other one, or both these ultimately, but these two cans here are holding all the uh, power caps and I've got a filter caps and I've got to replace all that. So that's where we are right now. Uh, when I get an update for you, I'll post it. So take care, be safe out there. See ya.